Hey guys, Ivan here and we got a couple of very interesting bodybuilding updates in this video but I wanted to start with this one, it's Samson Dauda one day ago and this is his back update, back and conditioning update before we analyze this physique update, I'm gonna show you a little clip from Boston Pro 2022 where Samson was beaten by Justin Rodriguez, William Bonek and Steve Kuklo. A week before that, he was also beaten by Brandon Curry, but he was able to beat Justin Rodriguez. However, Justin uh, sharpened up a little bit for this show, so he edged out Samson Dauda. And here you can see exactly why this happened. I think it was because of the back and just the entire back side. So, back development itself, but also conditioning, especially in the glutes. Because Samson always had this issue when he is shredded, it doesn't matter how lean he is, his glutes never really showed great separation. And that was always a big problem with Samson. However, this year, at two weeks out, I think it is a much different story because his glutes are finally coming in. So two weeks out, I think his glutes are just as separated as they were last year on stage. I think his conditioning is going to be better than ever, but I also believe that his development is on a much higher level, especially in the back. As you can see in these poses in the back, double bicep and back lat spread, his back looks thicker, it looks more developed. I think he really utilized that post-show rebound period to actually make some solid gains, because the two weeks out, he didn't really lose that much. I mean, he looks better, he looks bigger, he looks more developed, and most importantly, he looks to be bringing the best conditioning of his life and those glutes really seem like they're going to be shredded for once. I mean, check out this video. This really gives me Ronnie Coleman vibes. Look at the size of those freaking delts of that back. I mean, this guy is so massive, so big right now. It's interesting what he said in uh, RX Muscle interview uh, is that he made a lot of progress every single year. It's not that he made some crazy progress this year. It just, it added up. Finally, he's really freaking massive. And this is going to be really dangerous on Mr. Olympia stage. And of course, not only mass, I mean, guys, forget about the mass, forget about how big he is, take a look at this pose right here, admire these aesthetics, this is basically a flex wheeler, I wouldn't say 2.0, let's say new flex wheeler, I mean, he looks so aesthetic, this is just flawless, basically, this pose, he just looks amazing, and look at the conditioning, look at the inner ties, look at those veins, uh, look at the, the abs, how developed and how symmetrical the abs are, the small, tiny waist, uh, controlled midsection, uh, look at the size of those arms compared to his shoulders, it really creates a beautiful illusion, a beautiful silhouette, also look at the chest thickness, uh, even when he lifts that arm up, that chest looks really good, and there is a comment from this guy, Phil Wiz, he's a coach, and he mentions uh, him being peeled and also his back. And we talked about this earlier, and as you can see, his lats are high. He did develop his back quite a bit, it's going to look so much better, and I think the glutes are going to be uh, peeled enough. But even though his lats are high, I mean, come on guys, Dennis Wolf, take a look at what he has done with high lats. Just like Samson Dauda, he didn't really have a lot of lat development, his lats were really high, but he worked on those traps on that upper back and on those shoulders and arms and everything just flew so well. He had a beautiful flow of the physique and, you know, he did so well. He was third at the Mr. Olympia and maybe Samson will do the same this year, it's not impossible. And I do believe that he will surpass the likes of Justin Rodriguez, who was beating him at Boston Pro that I just showed you. And as you can see right here, at this point, two weeks out, Justin looks like this. And he is freaking massive. He is really freaking big. But I think this year, Samson is going to beat him because Samson is... Uh, Samson has gained a lot more muscle and he has much more aesthetically pleasing physique so I think Samson is going to surpass him finally even though Justin looks amazing right here honestly like he's one of those guys that we don't really mention that was in top 10 actually top 8 at the Mr. Olympia and he might slide in if he's super conditioned he doesn't have the best structure he has a really poor structure but he has a ton of muscle and he knows how to come in shredded Real quick guys, I just want to tell you about my favorite beverage to drink while I'm training and basically any, any time of the day. It is called Vintage Build. 
It is a combination of essential amino acids, glutamine and creatine. And it tastes delicious. There is so many different flavors, you can choose your own. If you guys wanna check it out, the link is down below. Make sure you use code EVAN for a 15% discount. And if you guys enjoy my content, you wanna see me make more of these videos, you can support me by buying one of the Old School Lab supplements. Again, the link is down below. Use code EVAN. Thank you, guys. As far as classic physique Mr. Olympia, nobody is really talking about Chan Kang, this guy right here, also known as Branch Chan. This guy was, I believe, third or fourth at the 2019 Mr. Olympia. Since then, we haven't really seen him, but we saw him earlier this year at Vancouver Pro, where he looked amazing. His conditioning could have been better, but his development, his shape, his aesthetics, uh, the entire flow of the physique was just outstanding. It was a pretty easy show for him to win and he didn't really prove anything but I believe he is going to take one of the top spots of the Mr. Olympia this year based on this physique update at 3 weeks out of Mr. Olympia. There is still a lot more time for him to get peeled, I hope he is going to do it finally, he never has done it so far so we can be doubtful but based on the way his genetics are, his shape is, his aesthetics are... This guy has a lot of potential, he has enough potential if you ask me to be like top 2 if he's shredded, because he's so genetically blessed, I believe he's more genetically blessed than for example Chris Bumstead, I think Chris worked harder and improved his physique a lot, but if you just talk about how gifted somebody is, this guy has to be in the conversation for the best genetics for classic physique in the world, and if his conditioning clicks, if he comes in shredded, which I don't know if he will, but if he does, he can do really well. He can be top two if you ask me this year, top two, top three. He was fourth, 2019. Can he repeat that this year? Whatever you guys think, tell me down below. All right, the next update is of Kevin Levroni in 2022, and uh, this one is rather interesting. It is Kevin Levroni basically doing, I don't know, what would I call this, some sort of CrossFit? Is this CrossFit? I don't know. But he's not doing regular bodybuilding training. As you can see, he's doing some sort of variation of squats and hammer curls. And so this is weird, this is awkward, because this is one of the best bodybuilders in the history of bodybuilding. He was arguably the best bodybuilder in the world at some point, and this is what kind of training he's doing now, CrossFit or whatever. Uh, I'm glad that he's active, he looks great, he looks better than earlier, so he started training, and you know, he's a hyper responder, his body will respond to anything pretty much, and he's trying to be uh, quote-unquote functional. I mean, what even is functional training? If you're training for hypertrophy and for strength, you're gonna do bodybuilding training, and your muscle is uh, functional in that sense, uh, but he's trying to be functional, I don't know in which way, and whatever he's doing, it's it's working as far as his look, he does look bigger and better, leaner, more muscular, because again, he's a hyper responder, he's lifting some heavy weights, he's back at training seriously, but what he's doing, I don't know, if it works for him, if he likes it, if he enjoys it, if he got bored of, uh, you know, classic bodybuilding training, then by all means, go for it, but I don't know, I just felt kind of awkward watching this what the hell is he doing right here he's doing bicep curls with one knee in the air i don't know it just looks weird <laughs> but it is keeping him active it is keeping him in the gym he is training and he does look great like for a 58 almost 59 year old yeah that's right kevin Lamone is almost 59 and at this age he looks phenomenal he looks better than most retired bodybuilders at 59 so, who am I to judge? I mean, CrossFit or whatever, he's, he's, look at this exercise, have squats, have hammer curls, whatever, I mean, if you ask me for my honest opinion, I find this pretty ridiculous, especially that he accepted this new style of training, but it is working for him, I'm guessing he's trying to sell something, I didn't really pay attention, but I'm guessing he's trying to sell some new kind of training, something new, and that's why he's doing this, uh, maybe, maybe not, maybe he just enjoys it, I don't know, whatever you guys think about uh, what Kevin Lavroni is looking like right now at 59 years old and what is he doing, uh, whatever you think about him doing CrossFit, uh, moving from bodybuilding, uh, the bodybuilding legend, the Hall of Fame, one of the greatest of all time, uh, now moving to what bodybuilders tend to hate, dislike, <laughs> CrossFit, uh, whatever you think about that, tell me down below in the comment section. 
three hours ago, James Hollings had posted this photo and I found it very, very impressive. As you can see, there are veins everywhere across his entire body. Separation as well. He is really lean right now and he is really hairy. So when he removes all this hair, when he gets the tan on, it's going to look much, much different, much better. But as for now, he seems to be as big as he ever was. Plus, he looks shredded, more shredded than I ever saw him, really. Maybe he was leaner at some points, but with this kind of muscle, with this fullness, it just looks more impressive. He just looks so grainy, so hard, and he was not super conditioned at Arnold Classic UK. There was a problem with conditioning. He could have been leaner, and I think he improved on that, and he is going to be much leaner than Mr. Olympia, but he did not sacrifice the muscle like he did last year. He did that patiently, slowly, so he kept all the tissue, he kept all the fullness, he looks just as muscular as he was at the Arnold Classic UK, so he looks better than ever right now, and at the Mr. Olympia, how well will he do? I don't know, I can't really predict, I don't think he can make the top 10, but he is one of those guys who might slide in if other guys are off and they are completely on, but I think he's going to be right at the verge of top 10, maybe like top, top 11, 12, 13, we'll see. I think he's going to make a leap from last year where he, I think he didn't even place. So we are definitely going to see a much better version of James Honingshead at a Mr. Olympia this year. Whatever you guys think though, tell me down below in the comment section. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Check out the old school app supplements. The link is down below in the description. If you guys want to see more stuff like this, more bodybuilding videos, subscribe to my channel guys. Thank you so much for watching. All the best and bye bye.